Hello campers. I am Serena, also known as Spatula, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that story tomorrow if you join me for Cooking with Ritual. Right now, we are going to enter into activating an adventure with art. And I'm very excited to be sharing this workshop with all of you and really dropping into this. And yeah, I, I, I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to pop on and double check that it's streaming in the Facebook group. And if you'll take just a few moments to gather any supplies. So uh, we sent out a list. Oh, good, Valerie. Glad to know that you're still gathering your supplies, perfect. So if you wanna take a couple minutes and just go grab some things, you don't need a whole lot uh, to be here. So I have some feathers. I went on a walk and I collected some feathers. I have snake skin because um, I have a snake and it's available. Um, I have some washi tape, which is just like colorful tape. I have sticks. And I have fire coals from a fire walk that we did um, a little while ago. I have some crayons and some paint and gel medium, which is like glue basically. So if you have like Mod Podge or something. And then all you really need is something to make marks with. So that can be uh, a stick or a paintbrush. It could be your fingers. Um, I also have a knife that I'll, I'll be showing you guys. It's actually not a knife. It's a tool um, that I'll show you. And then you want to do have something to do marks on. So that can be a paper plate. It can be a piece of cardboard. Um, it could be a tree stump, um, a jar, you know, oops, things are falling over. Um, you really get to choose. So I'm going to give us about two minutes to go gather things if you don't already have them. And I'll double check that we're streaming everywhere we're meant to. Yes, it worked. Okay. Fabulous. And so I'd love if you could post in the comments and just tell me where you're tuning in from. And if you want to, um, what kind of supplies you're using today. Just so I can get a feel for it. So excited. Wendy, can you see it now? I'm guessing so because you're commenting. <laughs> do, do, do. You're outside. I love that. Oh, and I also recommend grabbing hydration source of some kind uh, just because that's delightful and we want to stay hydrated um, throughout the day. Sometimes when we are doing something very intensely, we forget to hydrate. And so this is your invitation to go grab snacks or hydration also if you would like to do that. <laughs> Hello from Tucson. Um, drawing. Well, maybe. You may be drawing. Uh, I may be drawing. I don't know yet. Um, part of the process will be feeling into what marks we want to make. So some people may call that drawing and some people may not. Hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> okay. Everyone have all their supplies. Um, I do like to set sacred space whenever I'm creating art. So I'm gonna light a candle and just set the intent for curiosity and adventuring. So I'm gonna put that over here. You probably won't be able to see it, which is fine. Trust me, it's still there. And then I wanna talk a little bit about the process that we're going to be doing today because most of the session, I'm actually gonna have you tilted down 
like this so you can see what's happening down here. But before we do that, I'm going to talk about it. So I love to be able to connect with folks around art and also around nature. And so the purpose of this particular workshop is for us to drop into our curiosity, our playfulness, and the creation process and being able to dream things in physical form. And then the other aspect of this is being able to connect with the wilderness to nature. And that's uh, partially why I've invited you all to use some things from nature, if that feels good to you. And I do want to preface this workshop by saying this, the, the 45 minutes that we're spending together, um, you may or may not have a completed piece at the end of it, and that's okay. Um, I tend to work on my pieces of art for months sometimes, sometimes over days, um, sometimes for years. So this is an art journal. This is what I'll be working out of. It's made out of canvas. And um, I started this uh, when the quarantine started. So in March, April-ish. Um, and the some of the pages have things on them, some of them don't. And so I wanted to show you just a little bit about um, kind of like how I've created things, um, but I'm not setting us up for, you know, an entire day workshop around artwork. Um, this is just to dip our toes in. So imagining that we're going into the shallow part of the pool and that we've never created art before. So if you've taken a bunch of art classes, um, I kind of <laughs> invite you to forget any technical knowledge that you have about it. Um, and instead we're gonna draw on inspiration and our intuition. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Z Troll. This is my muse for the day. So I'm gonna put them in a candle. And I like to have little trinkets and things that are around me to inspire me. And so um, I had trolls growing up as a child and I happened to find these ones the other day and it was very exciting. <laughs> um, I got them from the clearance section in Target. And so I hadn't thought about trolls in a really long time. And what I loved about seeing it is that it took me back to a time of being able to play with them. And so really this, this workshop is a play shop. And the idea is for us to really get into getting curious, making mistakes, um, playing with things and just seeing what happens. So you missed the supplies list. The supplies list is simply grab a piece of something that you can do something on. Um, so something you can make marks on. So that can be a scrap piece of paper, a little piece of like cardboard. Um, it could be a candle, like an empty candle jar. Um, it could be in your planner. I mean, seriously, anything you can, you can create art on. Um, and then grab something to make marks with. So that could be a pen, it could be um, paint, if you have paint handy. And if you don't have anything, um, like you don't have any office supplies or anything like that, don't worry about it. Just watch, hang out, feel inspired, maybe close your eyes and dream into what you would be creating. And then take the uh, process and go outside and do it on your own after this. So no need to have like long extensive supply lists or anything like that. I'm using a variety of things simply so I can introduce you to the wonderful world of nature and art meeting each other. So this is um, a piece that I created and I wrote Warrior, Go Warrior Goddess. Um, and I did this while I was on a call actually. It was really fun. I just pulled out my art journal and I started doodling and it created this and it's not finished yet. I'll keep working on this over time. Um, and if you get really close up, so you can probably see these little lines. I made these with um, a, it's kind of like a, a trident um, that I made out of paper clips. So I just dragged it through here. It's so fun. 
So really what I want you to understand is that anything can be an art supply, it's literally anything. Um, these are some faces that I played with. And so I sketched these and then colored them in. Um, what else? I created little dots and they turned into this beautiful thing. Did you paint it or was the page painted? I painted it. Um, basically, I just dumped paint onto the page, which you'll see in a little bit, and then moved it around. So you can do that with a paintbrush. Um, you can do it with your fingers. The same is true for this. And so um, I'll start out as blank pages like this and I add to them. Okay. So. Um, all you'll need is something to make marks on. I'm going to be using this. Yes, practically perfect in every way, everything. And that's, I constantly will write movie quotes because I tend to watch a lot of movies and then just create things. So, um, I do want to show you all this tool that I have. I don't know if I'll use it, um, and that's part of my art process. So I don't actually know of the things I've collected what I'll actually be using until we're in the process. So this is a, it, it looks like a knife. I guess it's part knife, but it's also um, a tool that I can use for digging and things. And so I might use this as part of my process to move my paint around. So if you were out in the woods and didn't have a paintbrush, you could use something like this. Um, I also have some nail polish. So I might incorporate that. I have some pens from my office that I might incorporate. Um, these are like giant crayon things. I can pull them out. So um, they just, they're like crayons. It kind of looks like lipstick, but it's a crayon. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so yes, sponges are great. Anything that you want to make marks with. So I'm going to use this piece of cardboard. And I don't know if I'm going to use my paint yet. But I'm going to put little dabs on here just in case I decide to use them. And I don't want to put a whole lot on here because I am very mindful not to use, uh, not to use too many art supplies, uh, not to waste art supplies rather. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on here. And the other thing you can do is like, I realized as soon as I made this mark, oh, I could have used that. So I'm just gonna invite you, if you're using any kind of paint or an extra supply that you can just like run stuff around. You don't have to know what it's gonna look like or anything. But we're just gonna play and see what happens. And I didn't actually bring any of my paintbrushes on purpose because I think paintbrushes are great. And I think sometimes we get stuck in this place of thinking we can only make art with certain supplies. And I want you to know that you can make art any way you like. So I have my paint here, and now I've apparently committed to using this piece because now we have wet paint over here, right? So what I'd love you to do is just start to get to know your art supplies. So I have acrylic paint here, and I'm just gonna dab and see what happens. So I don't actually know. Ooh and see what happens, look. And so get to know your art supplies, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Spatula. Yes, pour the paint on your hands, like dive into it, really allow it to, to speak to you. And part of this is an intuitive process for me, which is listen deeply to your art supplies. They will call to you and, and invite you into the process if you listen. <laughs> so it's 
also no right or wrong way to do this. So just see what shows up. You can make certain designs. You can find something that's fun to you. I love having paint on my fingers and I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just making marks. And that's what's fun about this process is you just start making marks and see what happens. The other nice thing is that a lot of art supplies, um, not oils typically, uh, but a lot of art supplies are very forgiving. Um, it's easy to course correct if you've kind of gone off the rails a bit. And so play with that and see what happens. So after you've made a few marks with one of your art supplies, if you have a different kind of art supply, I'm gonna invite you to not look, you know, for certain colors or anything. Um, although you can, but just to grab one and try making marks in different ways. So that might look like making clouds. It could just be um, making things that are fun for you. Like just see what happens and allow it to just move. The other thing you can do is switch with your uh, dominant and non-dominant hands and see how that may influence what occurs for you. Yeah, soft pastels are so fun. These are, um, I think they're called color sticks. They're from Jane Davenport's line and I love them. She inspires me. Um, so you can switch on with your dominant and non-dominant hands and just see what occurs. I love to find different um, marks that I enjoy making. Like this was really fun. And so I might carry it on over here and see what happens. And it might not show up the same way over here. And some art supplies play well with others as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on my finger and see what happens when I start mixing this. Ooh, it's picking up the pigment. <laughs> yes, this is absolutely a not doing. <laughs> so for those of you who are familiar with the practice of not doings, which are found in many traditions around the world. It's the art really of doing something that you wouldn't normally do or breaking like a habit that you have. Um, and my version of playing with art often does that. Um, really, if you're not professionally trained in art, um, or listening to art rules, any kind of art can be this way. So I'm getting this really cool color happening here that I love. So I'm gonna do more of that. So one thing that I often encourage folks to do is play with, if you really like something, do more of it. If you really don't like something, you can do two things. You can find something else to do, or you can lean into it a little bit more and do it just a bit more and see what happens. Because sometimes you may find that through the process, you actually start to like it more. And I'm also paying attention to things like, as I'm putting my finger down, like sometimes I have more paint on it and it makes a different mark than as I get towards the end like this. And so you can play with that idea within yourself. Do, 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 do. Oh, this is so fun. And so you get to just play. And this is the opportunity, like 
you know, I kind of wish I had some marbles because if I had marbles, I'd put marbles in some paint and roll them around on here because I think that's fun. Um, okay, so now this is a different kind of paint and it's a lot, uh, it's more metallic and it's also like squishier if that's a thing. <laughs> um, and so I'm having a lot of fun moving my fingers through it and just seeing what happens. And then you can try like using the art supply in a different way. So like rolling your finger uh, like this, if you're using your finger or using a paintbrush, like drag the paintbrush in a different way and just see how does that make a different mark? Okay, and I just got inspired. So I have coals here from a fire walk. And I just got, in, I just got um, the coals. So I'm actually going to take the coal and I'm going to dip it into some paint. And I'm going to drag it. See, ooh, actually I'm going to stamp it first because that's calling to me. That's fun. And then I'm going to drag it. Let's see what happens. And so I can, it's almost like taking me back to the fire walk and walking across those holes. And so this is how we activate adventure, is this place of allowing the tools um, the materials to really call us into their magic, to call us into their process and listen to how do they want to be used. And you could do this too if you didn't have coals. Um, you could do it with sand. Um, you could also do it uh, with different types of clay you can find outside in some areas. And so allow whatever supplies you're using to call you into their process. And now it's mixing with my pastel crayons. And so now I have both teal and black moving in and out, which is beautiful. Yep, you can also use charcoal sticks for sure. Uh, this is actually a fire walk coal, so we walked on these and it was left, left over. And, ooh, I just discovered, so I flipped it over and now there's like a darker thing that's happening. This is much darker. Ooh. Right? So finding, you know, I also tend to make triangles. So if you've been making the same mark for a while, try making a different mark. So you could do triangles, you could do spirals. And we're not looking for perfection here. So uh, the, perf the perfect process around this is to allow yourself to be moved by the elements that we're working with, the materials that we're working with. So I'm being called again to use my green paint. So I have that on here. And we're just gonna see what happens. Where is it drawing me? Where is it calling to be used? And if there's ever an area where you put too much of an art supply down, you can always move it somewhere else. So I'm just dabbing right on this little dot because I put too much in that spot. And now I'm using it to make dots other places, which is super fun. Excellent, excellent. So I'm gonna put this one away for a little bit. I might bring it back out. 
And now I'm gonna look at some of my natural objects that I collected from outside. So I have snake skin. Um, this is actually not from outside, it's from my snake. Um, oh, and there's dirt that's coming off of it as well. Um, but I think I might use that here. We'll see. And um, I also have some feathers and I found these. These did not come from a bird I have in my house. Um, hmm. Not sure what I wanna do with them yet. They have little tiny feathers and then I also have, oops, kind of bigger ones. So we'll see where they want to be called to use. So these are the other ones. And so I'm just gonna place them on here to like start to start a conversation <laughs> between those nature objects and the piece that I've started to create. And I also have a stick, so I might actually dip this in some paint and make some marks. We'll see. And so just get a feeling sense and, and drop into your piece and allow it to speak to you, um, allow it to speak to each other. So imagining that the charcoal is now talking with the paint, which is now talking to the pastel and um, slash crayon, um, that's now talking to the feathers and the snake skin and the branch and like that all of these pieces are talking with each other and that they're in community together. Um, I also do this with books. I like to put books on the shelf next to each other and let them, let them be friends. And so you can take a break uh, for a couple minutes if you want that to happen on its own. You can just listen and allow yourself, don't think about it too much, just allow yourself to be drawn into the conversation as well. Um, to really listen deeply to what are they saying? Where do they want things to move? And maybe you're inspired um, to have a seashell um, and like trace around it or something like that. So one of my favorite tools is actually this cup. I tend to use this cup a lot. And so I'm actually going to make a mark using this cup and one of my markers. So I'm just going to take my marker and draw around the cup. And it doesn't need to be precise in any way, shape, or form. But I love to create perfect circles with this particular mug for some reason. I'm not sure why. And then I'm going to actually turn this because now I'm getting called to turn this a little bit. I'm going to let this conversation keep happening over here, but I'm going to start working over here a little bit. Let my snake skin hang out up here. So I'm being called to make little loops over here. And this is actually something, oh, and an arrow. This is actually something um, that I've started to know about myself, which are there certain types of marks that I just love making. One of them is arrows. Um, I like to think it's because, or possibly, because I'm Sagittarius. And um, Sagittarius sun, rather. And so um, I love, 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 love to make arrows. And um, then I also kind of want to make little loops or perches. And so find a mark, oops, that feels good to you. And just spend a few moments listening to your supplies, seeing what feels good. And I just realized this is a great place. Um, you don't have to make things precise in any stretch of the imagination. Um, no one's gonna be grading your artwork. And if that feels good to you, having straight lines and stuff, you can always use things like rulers, or um, the side of a book, 
I'm all about using what we already have, not needing to um, go out every single time we're gonna create art and buy things. And I also know that it's really fun, well, at least it is for me, to buy art supplies. That's really fun. So now I have this little design and then I'm being called to do this. And you can also turn your mark making object on its side and that will change how things look. Like that line just got thicker. So I really encourage playing with the way you use something. So I could use it this way, or I could use it this way. And so it just makes different things show up. Doop, 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 doop. That's fun. So find things that are fun for you or stretches and just allow that process to happen. I have no idea what this is. It's just calling me to make something. Oh, and now we've entered back into aerospace. <laughs> And so you can just allow things to move however however you want to, however you're being called. So if you have an adhesive, which I realized I did not put on the list, but if you have one nearby, you could grab it. So I'm using um, gel medium, matte medium, um, and this one's fluid medium, so it's actually really fluid. Um, but you can also just use like a glue stick or um, hot glue gun if you have that. Um, you could use Elmer's glue, which I use a lot, or Mod Podge. And so I'm gonna spread my gel medium here. Just a really thin layer of it and begin to lay down the snake skin. Again, I didn't plan this out beforehand. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do until I'm doing it. And I may change things. Um, we'll see. Oh, I love this. So because the snake skin is so thin, you can see the marks through it. And so I love to go on walks and just collect things. Um, my partner loves to joke that I just have dead things laying around my room. Um, because I have a whole art room dedicated to this, this kind of process. So I collect a lot of bones. Um, when I'm out at Warrior Heart Ranch, I'm constantly looking for, ooh, what can I do with that? Um, I like to collect just like regular sticks and I whittle them and then decorate them with paint and gemstones. Um, and so, Really, this process and creating art is all about whatever it is that you want to do, that you want to play with. So sometimes I'll even go get art supplies that I'm not sure how to use. Um, like I've never, never been taught how to use them. And I'll discover that however I've decided to use them works really well. Even if I watch, you know, a YouTube video or something and they're like, that's not how you use it. Who cares? Just have fun and experiment, get creative, get curious. I wonder what happens when I do this. I wonder what happens when I do that. 
So if you're using a glue like gel medium or Elmer's glue or anything like that, and um, oh, Miracle, I hope you're getting to use them again. I love soft pastels. Um, that if you're using any sort of gel or uh, glue, you want to make sure that you let it dry completely before you close. Um, if you're using an art journal before you close it, otherwise the pages will get stuck together and it kind of turns into a hot mess. So I now have my snake skin down here. It's very well gel, gel mediumed down. And I'm being called to use some more of this like metallic green paint and also some red paint. And I'm gonna actually dip my stick in there and see what happens as I start to scrape it about. Ooh. Okay, so one thing you'll learn about me is that I love stamps. I spent a lot of years as a child um, working with stamps with my aunt in her basement. Yes, there will absolutely be a replay. Um, everything will live on the um, summer camp unit and we're also going to create a YouTube playlist for everyone that registers will email that out. And so I spent a lot of years uh, working in my aunt's basement with her making greeting cards with stamps. We would play with stained glass um, and it was just a really fun process. So I love to make um, stamps out of literally anything I can find. And I'm actually really liking how this is looking on the stick. So what I might do is dip the stick further, get some of the paint off by making it a stamp. And then I'm gonna let it dry in the sun out here. And later, I think I'm gonna use it either as an altar piece or I might glue it in some way to um, my journal or attach it somehow to my journal. So I'm gonna actually paint the stick with my finger. And if you have a paintbrush, like surely you can use your paintbrush, um, but you can use anything to make marks. So I use knives at home and um, I'll take like old gift cards or credit cards and just put paint on them and then move the paint around with them. So that whole process is really fun. And um, I really do enjoy just playing and allowing things to show up how they're gonna show up. Um, and if there are like rules about something, break them. That's what they're there for. <laughs> See what happens. Okay, so I'm now being called to just kind of move this around. I'm kind of turning my finger into a dapper. Ooh, that's really cool. So the paint is covering over some of the snake skin and it's making this really cool design. So you get to play with that as well. Just making this happen. And so, um, you know, some someone was asking earlier, I think maybe it was Wendy, um, if I made the backgrounds. And so this all started, you know, when we started a little bit ago, this all started as one um, blank page. And now there's all sorts of stuff on it. And I love to make messes. So, um, You'll see me do that a lot. Is just, <gasps> and now it's made this purple color. I'm in heaven. <laughs> um, just watching to see like how things meld and shape and move together. What happens when we let go and also um, not have like agendas about things and just allow those things to appear. 
and to really listen deeply to ourselves. Um, we have so much wisdom in our bones and on our hearts. And we often, I think, get disconnected from that because of all the time we spend doing things in the modern world. But life is an adventure. Art is an adventure. Allow it to happen with you. Allow yourself to, to be the, the captain, so to speak. The hero of your own journey. And, you know, I lo really loved listening and being a part of um, Rachel's yoga this morning because I think a lot about how we do anything in our lives. And I remember learning this first from a yoga instructor. How we do anything in our lives is how we do everything in our lives. So if we can learn to let go, to be a part of the process, to take things and, and make them our own, um, it's really an invitation to do that in all areas of our life. And I loved that, you know, Heather Ash was sharing about the disaster mind. And one of the places where a lot of people's disaster minds show up is when they're creating art. Because somewhere along the line, we usually had some teacher or partner, she said, well, I hope I quit your job or something unhelpful about art. And so to really open to possibility and to let the naysayers uh, naysay their own life. <laughs> and for us to be adventurous with ours, um, if that's what you want to do. And if you don't want to do that, then don't. I'm all about remembering that we're at choice. And that there are options. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm so excited with how this is turning out. So I'll probably continue to work on this throughout the weekend and I'll post photos. Y'all are interested in that. I haven't quite figured out where these feathers are going to land yet. Oops. Um, so I'm not going to add them just yet. Ooh, that's kind of cool though. That might stay there. We'll let them have a conversation. Um, and so whenever, ooh, this might, this might be happening. <laughs> um, so whenever we're creating art to really allow ourselves to go into the process and to know that um, you don't have to like sit down and finish a complete piece or something every single time you sit down to do art. Um, you can work on it over periods of time. You can allow the pieces to morph and form over years if you want. You know, I, I said at the beginning, I started this at quarantine, at the, like when the quarantining process first started when COVID-19 was increasing here in the U.S. And um, some weeks I spend hours a day creating art, just making marks on paper. And other weeks, I might doodle while I'm on a call or something like that a couple times. So allow the art to really infuse your being, allow it to have a conversation, and allow the supplies, both the supplies that you may buy at an art store, or the ones you find out in nature, to be in conversation and dialogue with you. Allow them to take you on an adventure, um, to dream into what's possible and play with that. So I hope you all enjoyed being here and being a part of this process. Um, I also want to um, introduce one last piece. That's a bit of a plug um, for the, um, the bricks. So we have, um, Adobe bricks that we're making, which is part of adventuring in art as well. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen and see if it works. Aha, it is. There we go. So this is our Adobe 
bricks. Uh, these are ones that are in process and um, are sitting out to dry. Um, so if you'd like to buy a brick, which is basically supporting us in creating our kitchen um, at Warrior Heart Ranch, we have those available. And we'd appreciate um, if you buy a brick, we don't send you the brick. Uh, we did have some questions about that. Instead, what we do is um, we can write your name or a word of intent on it. Um, and then they'll be part of our kitchen. So that's really exciting. So when you come to Warrior Heart Ranch or um, if you have, you know, want to come see it um, or anything like that, you could totally do that. We'll also be posting pictures of the bricks. So we'll make a montage of all the bricks um, so that you can see those as well. So thank you again so much for playing with me. Continue to work through your process. You know, I really encourage you between sessions to play with it and just see what shows up. So I'm going to go wash my hands and um, get ready for our next session, which is blanket forts. So we have our little play panel, and we're going to show you how to make a blanket fort. Um, very excited. So I will see all of you very soon. Um, we have about 13 minutes. So go take a bio break, get a snack, buy a brick, um, and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.